Hello there and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. In today's video, we will be exploring simple photo manipulation techniques using oranges and fish. Although this tutorial is relatively easy, we will cover a lot of ground, including working with the layers panel, transforming layers, masking and creating shadows from scratch. If you would like to follow me along on your own computer, be sure to download the sample files from the link in a video description before we begin. And here we are in Luminar Neo, we are starting in catalog module looking at our sample files. The first one is the white background, then we have an orange, part of the orange, we also have this dark layer we're gonna be using for shadows, then we have the water and the fish. So to start with, we're gonna be working with the background, so let's click on it to select it and then move it into edit module by clicking on edit on the top of our screen or you can always use E on your keyboard. Now before we're going to start, I want to quickly mention that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Essential Preset Bundle. For a little fee, you will get over 40 preset collections, including 400 crafted presets. They are all designed to transform your images in Luminar Neo and to really take your images into new level and new direction. If you want to find out more about this bundle, visit our website cleverphotographer.com and to get the best possible price, make sure that you use the link in the description of this video. After this, we need to bring our oranges. So for this, we're going to turn our attention towards our layers panel click on the plus sign and click on load image. Here, navigate towards the location where you downloaded the sample files and let's just import all of them. Actually, all of them except the background. So we'll start with the dark layer. Then again, we're gonna add the orange, the second orange, golden fish, and to finish it, the water. Once we have all of this here, let's start with the oranges. So first the full orange, so we click on it and it only takes few seconds and it will be added into our layers. Since we have it selected, let's go to our main toolbar, focus on the layer properties and here go to the bottom into the image mapping and click on fit. This way it will be stretched the right way, everything will look right. So now we can use the handles in a corner of the layer and adjust its size. So let's say that we're going to go for something like this to start with. Now when I hover over the layer, you can see my mouse change into this handle and now I can just drag it wherever I want it. So for the time being, let's put it here. Let's go back to our layer properties and increase the opacity. So first come first, we have the orange here. After this, we're going to add the second orange. So back to our layers panel, again, plus sign and select the second orange here. Once the second orange is added, the workflow is pretty much same. We're going to go to our main toolbar, layer properties and down to the image mapping. Here again, click on fit. And now again, we can adjust the size of the orange. Now let's drag it closer to the first one and use it as a guide for the size. So I think somewhere around here is looking good. On purpose, I want to position it in such a way that it overlap the first orange little bit, just like you see here. And once I'm happy with the position, or at least for the time being, we can go back to layer properties and increase the opacity. So now we have the two oranges. Now looking at it, I would actually like the first orange to be facing towards the other way. So to do this, let's go back to our layers panel, select the second orange, and you can always see what is selected as it has this blue frame around it. After that, we go back to layer properties and here we're going to go into our flip options and we're going to use flip horizontal. So we click on it and that's that. So you can see really easily how to position and transform the layers around and also how to flip them. 
Now, before we're gonna continue, let's just adjust the position, make sure everything looks good. So really we want it maybe a little bit bigger and a little bit more in the center of the image. So I think somewhere around here. So now we are good. Now we have the two oranges and the next thing we need to do is to add some shadows. So for this, we're gonna go back to our layers panel, click on a plus sign, and here, this time, select the black layer. With the dark layer added, we can go back to our layer properties, then to the bottom, into the image mapping, click on fit, and after that, go back to opacity slider and increase it to 100. Next thing we need to do is to click on masking and select the radial gradient. Looking at it, it's telling us to click and drag to draw the gradient. So we'll do exactly that. Let's just create nice gradient right here. You can position it by hovering over the middle point and just drag it in the center of the dark layer. Now it doesn't matter if it's not exactly in the middle, as long as the full circle is on the dark layer. Once we finish here, we go back to layer properties and click on the little arrow in front of the radial gradient. Once we do that, you can see that we got the dark outside and then by gradient going into the brighter part in the middle. But we actually want exactly opposite. So let's go back to layer properties. We are still in masking and this time we're gonna go into the mask actions. Click on it to open it and here click on invert. By doing that, you can see that we have inverted the mask and now we have the dark part in the middle then the gradient and the brightest part at the end. Once we finish here, we can close the mask actions and we can go into the properties. So now by doing all of that, we have prepared a layer for our shadow. So now we can transform it. First, we're gonna make it smaller and then we can drag it under the orange here. Now, of course, the shape doesn't look right. This is where when you drag on each side of the layer, you will adjust the height and the width separately. So for us, we definitely want it a little bit more flat, so somewhere around here. And with the length, well, let's start here. Now we're gonna position it under the orange. And as you can see, it's actually going over the orange. So to adjust this, we need to go back to our layers panel and then drag the dark layer under both of the oranges. By doing that, you can see how the layer with the shadow immediately drop behind the orange. Now, looking at it, I think it's still a little bit too big, so let's adjust the size. And I think it's a little bit too visible. It's a little bit too dark. To adjust this, we can go back to Layer Properties and still make sure that you have the shadow selected and here very simply adjust the opacity. So we're gonna take the slider, bring it down, and let's see, I think somewhere around, maybe here, is looking good to start with. We can again position it, and I think for the time being, we are good. Now we need to do exactly the same for the second orange, but we don't have to recreate it. All we need to do is to go into our layers panel, right click on the first shadow, and select duplicate layer. This will duplicate our shadow layer, now we can drag it around, position it under the second orange. We can adjust the size just so they don't look exactly the same. Let's have a look. Still making sure that we have the shadow selected somewhere around here, maybe a little bit longer. And once it's there, let's also go back to layers properties and adjust the opacity a little bit further. So I think somewhere around here. Once we're happy, we can hit enter on our keyboard and now we have a two shadows for our oranges. Now moving on with our project, the next part is to add the water into our orange. To do this, we're gonna be using masking, but first we need to make sure that we have the orange selected. For this, you can go back to layers panel and make sure that you have the orange selected. And again, you will see that once it's selected, it has the blue frame around it on the layers panel, as well as blue frame on the actual image. Now, once we have it selected, we can go to layer properties, click on masking and click on brush. 
Now we have the brush ready, so let's zoom in. We can do that by using Command or Control Plus. And let's go quite close, I think maybe somewhere around here. And don't forget that when we have the brush selected, you can use a spacebar on your keyboard to move around. So let's make sure that we see the orange nicely. And let's go back to our masking panel. Here on the top, we want to make sure that we are on Erase. We will be removing certain part of the layer. After this, with the size, we're going to be adjusting it. Just don't forget that you can use the bracket keys on your keyboard to adjust it without the need of coming back here. With the softness, we want to bring it down to somewhere around 10. And with the strength, we want to keep it on 100. Now, with the brush, you actually want to keep it quite small. You want to make the selection quite rough. You don't want straight lines. You want almost like you are kind of biting inside of the orange. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. So again, maybe a little smaller. And now when I paint, so let's make one brush. As you can see, it removes the part of the orange where I painted. Now, of course, that to start with, I can create a big brush and very quickly just remove the big part of the orange where I don't need to be precise. So something like this right here is good to start. So now we have this part. So now just the details. So let's adjust the size. Again, bracket keys on the keyboard. Let's go somewhere around here, maybe 95. And now let's just start to paint away part of the orange. And all I want you to look at is to make sure that we have no orange pieces left here. So go a little bit behind the orange, somewhere around here. Keep adjusting the size yeah, somewhere around here and make these kind of zigzag movements. And once you get to the point when the white part goes in this kind of pointy shape, just follow it a little bit. Again, looking at this part, you can see we have a little bit of orange there. So let's remove it and let's keep brushing away. So a little bit of movement somewhere around here. Good. As you can see, again, we have a little bit of orange here. So let's brush it away somewhere here. And we're going to continue here. So again, brushing away and erasing this part of the orange. Again, double check for those little details. And once we're happy, we continue in this direction. Here as well. Don't worry if you go over, it's not a big deal. And I think somewhere around here. Now looking at it, looking at the part we have erased, you can see we have no orange here and I think it's looking all good. So now we have erased the middle part of the orange and the next thing we need to do is to add the water. So let's go back to our layers panel, click on a plus sign and this time select the water. Once the water will be added, let's hit Command or Control Zero to zoom out. And again, back to Layer Properties and click on Fit. Once we do that, we can now adjust the size of the water and position it closer to the orange. Now we need to zoom in. So let's zoom in a little bit and let's have a look at it, making sure that the water is kind of coming from the side of the orange here. So let's zoom in even closer and let's start by looking here. Now, I'm sure you know what I mean looking at it right here. You just want the edge of the water kind of in line with the side of the orange here. Doesn't have to be exact, but to start with. After this, let's have a look at the other side. And actually looking at it, we need this bit to be a little bit higher. So we will need to rotate it. So let's rotate it, let's say somewhere around here. And I think if we zoom out, it may be a little bit easier. Again, let's have a look, maybe rotate it a little bit further. Now to rotate it, you just hover outside of the layer and your mouse will change into these little arrows and you can rotate the layer around. Now it's looking good. Let's just adjust it a little bit here and let's zoom in to double check. Here it's all good. And when I zoom out and have a look here, it's looking good too. So now we are done with this part and we can go into layer properties. Here we're gonna increase the opacity a little bit. And after this, we need to do a little bit more masking. But before we're gonna do that, we will go into layers panel, take our water 
and drag and drop it under the orange peel or under the orange part. Once we do that, just like with the shadow, the water will automatically drop under the orange. So it's looking good. Now we need to adjust it a little bit further. So let's zoom in here. I think we need to bring it down a little bit here. That's all good. And let's have a look at the other side. Here, everything is good. It maybe needs to be a little bit wider and everything looks good here. Maybe even a little wider. And once we're done, we are done. So now to the masking part. Let's go on to masking, still making sure that we have our water selected. And you already know we're gonna go into brush, erase. We're gonna adjust the size of the brush. We're gonna bring the softness down to somewhere around 10. And now very quickly, we can just brush the parts that are easy. So let's say right here. And that's looking all good. Let's just zoom in making sure that we have brushed everything here away. Perfect. And the top we don't need to worry about, but maybe here on the side, just making sure that the water is looking like it's coming from behind. So we have done that and equally here, but everything is looking good here. And now we need to brush this little part away because once we increase the opacity, it will cover the orange. So let's just take care of this immediately. Zoom in and we are just going to use the water as a guide to help us to brush this part away, something like this and right here. So that's looking great. Let's zoom out and we are almost finished. All we need to do is to click on properties and increase the opacity to 100. So now we have the water inside of the orange and we have one more thing to do to make it a little bit more realistic. First of all, zoom in a little closer. And now looking at it, you can see we have water inside. However, we can't see the second orange. And we should be, if it's see-through, if it's transparent, we should be able to see the orange. Well, to adjust this, while we still have the water selected, we're gonna go inside of the masking, click on the brush and click on erase. Now we want the brush to be quite big and we want the softness to be on 100. But with the strength, we actually want to go down. So somewhere around 10. And now very carefully, we're going to be brushing over this part until we start to see a little bit of the orange coming through. So let's adjust the size somewhere around here. And now one stroke. Let's have a look. You can start to see the orange already. Now one more brush stroke right here. It's looking even better. And maybe just one more brush stroke. Let's go for it until we get something like this. You can always adjust the brush and paint over other areas, for example, here, if you want to. However, the easiest way to see it is to zoom out and double check. And I think that this little touch make it look a little bit more realistic. So now it's time for the final piece, and that's to add the golden fish inside of the orange. This will be actually really easy. We just need to go back to our layers panel, Click on the plus sign and this time select the fish. Once we have the fish in our layers panel, same thing like with all the other layers, back to the layer properties, click on fit, then adjust the size and position it inside of the orange or inside of the water. So let's say somewhere around here. Now you want it kind of small, maybe around here. And the next thing we want to do is to go back to layer properties and increase the opacity. However, that doesn't look right, right? And now if we would put the fish behind the water, it would disappear. So what can we do? Well, this is where the blend mode going to help us. So let's go back to layer properties, click on the blend mode drop down box and change it from normal into darken or multiply, whatever works better for you. Darken actually leaves a little bit of a white glow around the fish. So let's select the multiply. And I think it's looking great. I really, really like that. Now we can, again, if we want to adjust the size of the fish or position, but for me, somewhere around here is fine. After this, we can hit enter and we are finished. Now, what would be some of the further steps? Now you could play around with the shadows. If you think they are a little bit too strong, you can select them again and adjust the opacity. So maybe bring them somewhere around here, this one on 37. 
And the second shadow also, let's go a little lower, maybe somewhere around 42. Furthermore, you could export the image, bring it back in and apply other editing to it. Maybe use LUT or one of the presets. But in overall, I think we are done and I think it's looking great. All we're going to do, we're going to crop it. Let's just go for one on one square. Let's make it nice around. And once we have everything selected, just hit enter and we are finished. So this is how you very easily create this photo manipulation of orange, water and fish. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.